Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger, my friends. In this video, we've talked about choosing your main character before in Mortal Kombat 1. Now we're going to talk about choosing your cameo, because honestly, your cameo choice is as important as your main character choice. Cameos are at the heart of this game. They offer so much to every character, it will define how you play. If you play a character with Kung Lao, your game plan is way different than if you're playing a character with Shujinko, right? Even if you're playing the exact same character. So in this video, I'm going to be going over every single cameo, what they're capable of, and since a lot of people, this might be your first game with assists, I'm also just going to talk about the cameo system in general and how the rules work, and then we'll go through every single character. And if you want to skip ahead, there'll be timestamps. And if you do skip ahead, hey, leave a like. It's appreciated. Thank you very much. But first, let's talk some of the general rules of cameos before we get into the character specifics. Now, first, before anything else, I want to tell you that your cameo also affects your character health, not just all your moves. And trust me, the moves are great, right? Don't get me wrong. But look at our Liu Kangs here. My Liu Kang has a thousand health with Sonya. The opponent Liu Kang has 950 health with Goro. Now things have changed. So my cameo is still the same as it was, but now the opponent Liu Kang has switched to Sub-Zero and now they have more health than me. So keep that in mind. It's more than just a set of moves. Cameos, depending on what their considered relative strength is, also gives you more or less health. That's a big deal. So that said, before we get into the weeds, also your forward throw is determined by your cameo. So everyone has some different properties. We'll get into that if they stand out in the character specifics. Now, the cameo meter, it's right beside your health. And basically everything you do costs either half your meter or all your meter, depending on the character. The difference is the relative speed of regeneration. If it always costs half, it doesn't mean the whole story there. So look at this. So Sonya throws a fireball, right? And the meter regenerates fairly quickly, as you can see here. Not too long, but if we do a different cameo call, it still takes half. But now look at the regeneration rate. It's quite a bit slower. So the cost is always the same on paper. It's the regeneration rates. So generally, the more powerful the move, the longer it will take your assist meter to regenerate. Now, there's two kinds of assist calls. There's summons and ambushes. So summons is when you strike a pose and your cameo comes and does whatever assist they're going to do, right? So you have to be grounded. You have to be not doing anything else. You can do it in combos. Like that part's perfectly fine. Don't worry about that. You can do it in combos all you want, right? Sometimes it's better for the enemy to block the cameo. So say Liu Kang here, we do our string, it's negative four. So we have slight disadvantage out of the fact, right? But if we force him to block the Sonya cameo at the end, we're plus one, so we have slight advantage, right? And there's all sorts of permutations on that. But yeah, regardless, basically, you have to be standing still or canceling into it. That is how summons work specifically. Ambushes, you can be doing anything. Ambush, you just hit the button and they come out. So I could be actively jumping. I could be doing, say, you know, a special move. It doesn't matter. Ambushes, you hit the button, and as long as the meter is there, they will come out. In a lot of ways, these are more powerful because you can call them whenever. As long as you're basically not being hit, you can call them. So that's very powerful. And thus, generally speaking, they tend to have slower recharge rates due to that relative power. For the most part, ambush assist, because you can be doing anything at all while you're doing it. It just makes combos very easy. Like, you don't got to think about it too hard. You can just hit a button, go, and get an easy combo. The only issue is, obviously, it's not infinite, right? So, if you're relying on your combo structure on the ambush assist, just keep in mind, there may be a time where you do it too much and you don't have the meter, so you have to figure out some other combos. Another thing to note is summon cameos have a brief amount of invincibility if you use them as a wake up. So you can see here, Liu Kang's hitting me after I'm getting up. But if I use my summon assist here with Serena, I'm invincible and I can actually knock him out of it. Now, character to character, they're different values. Some summon assists are just not valuable at all as a wake up. Some are very valuable as a wake up like Serena, right? As she's effectively like doing like a dragon punch. So keep that in mind. It's another layer of defense as well. Instead of uh, just you always having to spend meter on an armored wake up. For this, as long as you have cameo meter, certain characters give you basically a reversal as well. And that's the basics. They get weird, like Serena can like drain your meter and all that. There's lots of weird rules. And let's start now with the character specifics and let's start with Serena. So Serena is probably the pound for pound easiest to use cameo. I'm not gonna say it's the best, but basically almost every character can benefit from Serena in one way or another. Why? Well, one, 
She gives you a basic projectile toss, right? That's one of the things she can do. A lot of characters in this game are a little deficient in zoning. Like, they'll have stuff like, say, Reptile. It's Force Ball, but like, as you can see here, Force Ball doesn't quite go full screen. And that's really all he's got to work with. If he wants full, full screen, he has to burn meter. And it's still slow. This is wicked fast. And as you can tell by the regeneration rate of her cameo, you can just kind of spam this, right? Like, this will almost always be available to you. So, if you're looking for a quick, dirty, reliable fireball, Serena will give that to everybody. Because, once again, cameos are universal, right? And besides that, if you hit her back cameo, now she starts tossing all sorts of projectiles. And it's basically a boomerang effect, right? Even from full screen, if you toss this out and get a hit, you can follow up. Most characters can still at least get a follow up and get some extra damage, right? So basic quick projectile, longer lasting projectile that gives more damage because you'll get some combo ability on hit. And naturally, if you're just going for basic combos, Serena... She makes your life a lot easier to say the least, right? Like, as long as you got that meter, you can just keep looping and keep getting more damage. The scaling will get you in the end. Your combos will do more damage overall, but like by the end, the last few hits, your combos will basically be doing exactly nothing. But if you're looking for easy hit confirms, you're gonna struggle to do better than Serena because she can just give you the world very easily. And there's still more to talk about. So that's part of the universal stuff. Her ambush, where you can be doing anything, is very different. It drains the opponent's meter. So, while you're hitting the opponent, they'll gain meter back anyways, I guess, but it sort of curtails their meter gain. It's interesting. If there's situations where they have the opponent, like, especially cornered, you might as well, because taking away meter, like, meter is your lifeblood in this game, right? Like, if you have no meter, you can't do much. If you have meter, then the options start happening. Her fourth throw cameo is uh, actually slightly better in average and damage. It does 1% more damage. Normally, forward cameo throws do 11, and this does 12, and also resets to full screen. So if you're uh, a character that's more zoning focused, or once again, you're Serena, right? You're full screen. Hey, cool. Now I'm going to start tossing that good projectile, right? She helps set up her own game plan. And the final thing down cameo button is her effective flash kick. And it's the single most invincible wake up in the game. So once again here, if you do summon assists, when you wake up, you get a brief amount of invincibility. And her invincibility, as far as I can tell, is the single best in the game. So if you're looking for good wake ups here and you don't want to spend meter on armored reversals, because, you know, that gets expensive, then she gives you a very strong wake up. She basically turns you into Guile from Street Fighter, right? She'll flash kick him on the wake up. And also it's safe on block. They block this bad boy, it's only negative one. Like, it might as well not be a thing. <laughs> so, uh, if they're gonna bait this wake up, they have to, like, jump over your head or something. Like, they have to go beyond the pale, because otherwise, your wake up game is gonna be very strong. So, yeah, Serena, once again, I'm not gonna say she's the best cameo, but is she the most applicable cameo? Does she help the most amount of characters? I would say yes. Basic good fireball. Combo ability on everything for every single character. Every character benefits from her multi-projectile toss. A good wake up and some interesting gimmicks with stealing meter if you're looking for that, right? So you cannot go wrong with Serena in the end. Now let's talk the Scorpion cameo. He's a very interesting one. One, his ambush assist. He just pops up the screen, launches uh, air fireballs. They can't hit standing opponents, just FYI, but they just help combo ability just very, very easily. And not the least of which, you can send him in specific spots. So here he is beside me. Okay, this time he's a little further out. Or this time, he's full screen. So if you hit down or up while you're hitting the cameo button, it will determine where he shows up on the screen, which once again, makes combos easy. So to give a basic example here, Tanya, she can do her uh, spiral kick to launch the enemy. And I say, I call Scorpion right when I do it. You got some easy juggle potential there, right? So we're fishing for combos, and I see I got my hit. Cool. I'll do my move and call him at the same time. And now, easy peasy combo, right? It helped out. Not the most optimal combo. I'm not That's not what we're here for, just to show you, but just to give you an idea, right? So anytime, anywhere you bounce the enemy, Scorpion can easily help combo out. It can help also in oddball situations where normally you would not get anything. Because once again, it's an ambush, right? So Tanya has a string here. It's a heck of a bunch of lows, and it slightly launches at the end of the string. So normally she can't do anything about it. Like, it's not special cancelable. 
It just is what it is. But with Scorpion helping us out, being the pal he is, and now the string here, normally nothing would be possible. We get the hit and that's it. And now we get combo potential out of it. So anytime you get the enemy just even a millimeter off the ground, it can connect and you better believe easy juggling. Now also the assist here, right? Uh, he also forward cameo call gives you a big overhead, which is a crumple. So say we can combo into it. Like, that's easy, right? So if you get a hit confirm, you can easily call it, cause crumple, then just keep comboing. That's handy. And once again, it is a true overhead. Has to be block standing. So if you want to go for some gimmicks, like a quick low into the overhead, it is possible. Although it's not safe on block, so don't go too crazy on it, right? But yeah, so Scorpion gives you good just brute force mix right there. And now, one of the most interesting things, Scorpion, very famous for the spear, right? He can use it on you. He'll pull you back and reset your distance on the screen. So Tanya, our example here, once again, she's a fairly long range character. Like she competes from ranges that other characters for the most part cannot, uh, thanks to her staff range, all that kind of stuff, right? So say she's in a situation where like, I don't want to be here anymore. Like that combo starter we use, right? Okay, got blocked, that sucks for me. Uh, so you know what? Peace out, I'm done. Let, let's reset here. Let's go back to the range I'm really good at and you have to deal with me from this range, right? I screwed up up close, so I just, I'm done. Let's play again, let's try over. And the really messed up thing about it, so say they know you're gonna run away, right? I'm gonna attack you as soon as possible, right? So Scorpion here will have him set to do his charge move. The thing about the pull is it's armored. So when you're getting pulled back, even if they try to hit you, you will be safe. So no matter how you swing it, you basically get out of jail for free. Now, the thing about this is the recharge rate is not terribly fast on this move because it is very powerful. And certain characters that want to play a more long range game, this is very valuable to say the least, right? Because to get out of dodge mostly free is very powerful. So Scorpion gives you child's play easy combos with his Hellfire. The overhead is good for combo ability as well. And plus it's an overhead. And if you're the kind of character that wants a little space wants to just be able to play your game out of range. He just pulls you back like the big baby you are and lets you reset your space. You didn't have to earn it. Papa Scorpion's here to help you out and do all the hard work for you. So if that sounds interesting, Scorpion might be the cameo for you. Now, in a lot of ways, Sub-Zero is almost the most basic cameo in the game. Uh, one thing, he does give you a little bit more life. His throw, his cameo throw, does a little bit more damage in average. 13% instead of the usual 11%. Actually, it's the second most powerful cameo throw in the game. So if you're looking for just throw damage, he definitely helps out. So can he freeze you? You betcha, right? That, that's the name of the game. And a lot of characters heavily benefit from the freeze, especially characters that struggle with combos on their own for the most part without any amount of safety. Uh, Lee Mei, I think, is an excellent example of someone benefiting from the freeze because it lets her just do combos from things that normally she can't. Like this string here, one, two. Without a freeze, this is their best combo. That's it. And with a freeze, much better. Now, I know I've showed this combo before in other videos. I'm sorry, but it's just a really good highlight of what a freeze does for her. 42% or 15%, right? It's a pretty wild difference. So she benefits heavily from a freeze. And as a summon assist, it's very fast. Like literally any hit you can combo into the freeze and go from there, right? It's very strong. Simple, but effective. That's the name of Sub-Zero. Also simple and effective. So his back assist is the cold shoulder. It's a mid, it's fast, so you cannot neutral duck it as a mid. Also, it is up there with the most amount of invincibility you can get on a wake up cameo summon. So if you're looking for strong reversal, strong defense, Sub-Zero definitely gives that to you because it's very reliable as a getup. So perhaps the main reason to pick him is it gives you the ice shield and the ice shield makes you invincible to projectiles. Like you don't even flinch. It's not even armor. You're just invincible and it lasts for a decent amount or it'll last till it absorbs five projectiles. So Mortal Kombat is traditionally a game where fireballs are stronger than usual in most fighting games. And if you don't like fireballs, you can literally say, no, I'm not playing this game at all. I, I'm invincible the whole time. And this is also an ambush assist, so you don't have to commit to the animation for the summon. So you can be moving around while he'll protect you. So 
on top of the shoulder, which is pretty decent. And obviously, giving everyone the ability to freeze helps combos. If you just don't like fireballs, Sub-Zero is the biggest FU in the game to someone who uses fireballs. Because you basically take away that entire part of their game. You are just immune. It's trivial to set up. You can set up as much as you want for the most part. You can spend most of the match fireball immune. So if that sounds interesting to you, well then Sub-Zero is your character. Goro, Goro, he's a big boy. He's very interesting as well. So um, one of the main things about him, the most defining aspect of the character is the up punch. So if you listen to the Scorpion part, he's like Scorpion in that you can summon him at various distances, including full screen. And he'll basically punch up in the air and that's about it. So one of the main uses out of the gate, right, is he can make basically almost any block string advantage on block. So it is a high, yes, but there's many times where if they're forced to block, they cannot neutral duck at all. So they just have to accept it. And if they let go block, they get hit, which is all the better for you, right? But any string that is any kind of negative or even potentially even unsafe on block, you can call Goro and Goro says, nah, you are now at advantage on block. And if that was it, and that was it alone, that would still be fantastically powerful, right? But once again, it's a hit, right? And he is, you know, hitting fairly high up. And it turns out, you know, especially with the fact that he's aimable, you can get really silly with that, right? So like for someone like Rain, it lets him combo off his full screen projectile. Because Goro being the helpful buddy he is, he'll just rejuggle you and then you can go into a second fireball. So all the gimmicks and especially juggle combos helps out a lot. Like basically gives us a whole second rep of air juggles in the corner. So combo ability is the name of the game and pressure. So that's both two layers of very strong stuff and there's more to go with. So forward call is punch walk, the classic. So he basically bullies you and beats you up and knocks you across the screen. So if you're looking for space, naturally you can also combo into it in a lot of ways. Just fully reset the opponent to the end of the screen. If you can force them to block it, it also creates a good amount of pushback between the two characters and does not non-appreciable chip. Uh, not tons, but you know, they'll feel it. The back cameo is also interesting as, as you can tell here, he's grabbing. So normally you can't grab anything as he's whiffing. So what's up with that? So this is a crouching grab and <laughs> As you can see, he tosses you out like the trash you are. So if the enemy is any kind of crouching, you can totally use it raw and just like get combos and all that kind of stuff. Also, normally it would only hit duckers, but while you're doing combos, you can also easily combo into it. So if you're looking for extra juggles and combos, then he gives you a fantastic combo extender. So we got punch walk, we got grabs that chuck you, and I buried the lead here because everyone loves the one thing and yes, he gives you the one thing. So when you do the up punch, if you hit the button again, he goes for the Goro Stomp. And yes, you better believe that is unblockable. So nothing you can do is gonna stop it. If you get it, it's Stomp Town. You can aim it as well. So you can have a version that's a little closer. You can have a version that's a little further, right? To anticipate the enemy moving around. Like I can be throwing you and call Goro. Like, oh, hey, good time to call him. And as you're waking up, whoops. And uh, there's gonna be a lot of situations you can set up that are effectively guaranteed hits. It takes the whole bar, so it's not free, right? And 9%, while well, it's not nothing, uh, you know, it is gonna be guaranteed damage in a lot of situations. So yeah, it's kind of messed up. So Goro offers a lot of things on top of the fact that if you love your setups, a lot of characters can set up a almost guaranteed 9% after whatever you're doing. So if you like the big boy Goro, I think he'll do pretty well by you as your cameo. So now Shujinko. Shujinko breaks the rules of cameos. So let's pull the band-aid off on this. So he only has normally two attacks. He has four cameo and he has back cameo. And they're just basic strikes, right? So the thing about it is you can call these whenever. As you see, he starts with no meter at all. So what you need to do is call him out and he'll meditate. And while he's meditating, then he'll build the cameo meter. And you basically have to protect him while he's doing it. So why is he so different? Because he plays by different rules. So now, say we got a full cameo meter, right? Our opponent is Kung Lao. If I do quarter circle forward and the cameo button. Wait a sec. Wait a second. I threw the hat. What is up with that? 
Shujinko is the move thief of the Mortal Kombat franchise, and he does exactly that. He steals moves. So based on what opponent you're fighting, he will do their moves accordingly. And now say, that takes half of a cameo bar. If I have a full cameo bar and I do quarter circle back and the cameo button, he will do Kung Lao spin. So every character in the game, he will take two moves from them. One will take half a bar, the other will take a full bar. So basically the whole idea is you baby him and you set him up, you let him meditate, you protect him while he's meditating. And then when he's ready and good to go, he'll start doing stuff. And by the way, both his basic strikes, the kick and the punch, are both cancelable into the various cameo moves that he has. So just to give you a couple examples here, because this is the most character dependent matchup cameo in the game, right? So now if I'm up against Sub-Zero, quarter circle forward cameo, lets him do the slide. And that's a very quick low, right? Very handy. And sure enough, quarter circle back gives me the freeze. So once again, stealing the opponent's moves. And like Shujinko's really committed to the bit, right? He can grow Baraka Tarkatan arm blades and shoot them out. That's dedication to the bit. Like, look at this. He can do everything, man. So he's easily the most unique cameo in the game. Nothing else is like him at all. So you do have to baby him. Thankfully, the base meditate is an ambush. So you can call him whenever you want. You can send him up on the other side, be safe and get his bar in. Off either of his basic strikes, he can also meditate. And also you can make him set up so he meditates while sitting down, just so projectiles will go over his head. But yeah, if you want someone to help you just like break the rules of the game, Shujinko is that guy for sure. Now Jax is here for mostly two things, combos and setups. He doesn't offer too much mid-screen presence by himself. Uh, the thing with him is specifically, he'll leap up and he has the backbreakers. So generally, if you're any kind of airborne, gotcha, and he breaks your back. And the benefit of him being a ambush assist is actually pretty easy for you to set him up like multiple times for combo. You can backbreaker, do more moves, backbreaker, do more moves, all that kind of stuff. Very, very easy combo ability. Any kind of juggle easily, easily, easily works with Jax. If he does catch you out of a move, he'll knock you out of the move, which is fine a lot of the times, sometimes even beneficial. But yeah, it's part of the character. Backbreaker, easy combos, that's basically it. Now, the showstopper is the ground pound. The ground pound is a true, honest to God, unblockable. You have to just be not touching the ground. And friendly fire is on, by the way. He does not care who he hits. In fact, until he hits the enemy, he'll stay on the screen. He doesn't care. So if he's got to keep beating your head in, that's fine. He'll only go away if he hits the enemy or after three hits. So he'll stay on the screen for a long time. He's a persistent dude. And the main thing about this is there's a lot of ways to set up almost unblockable setups. To that point, I have this set up here. Liu Kang's gonna do his armored reversal the second he gets up after the combo I'm about to do. And you see right there, it didn't work exactly, right? He had armor, but he couldn't armor through two hits. Only one hit of armor for most characters. So a lot of the time, it's almost a guaranteed setup, a guaranteed combo. How do we deal with it? Well, there is the delay wake up mechanic. It just lets you stay on the ground a little bit longer than normal. So just keep that in mind. If you stay on the ground longer than normal, usually Jax will whiff the move. So that is one defense layer. And certain characters, uh, either through uh, hitbox, weirdness, or just general speed of the move, they can survive. But for the most part, a lot of the time, if you don't do delay wake up, the setup's gonna be pretty much guaranteed. So you gotta keep that in mind. Also unique to Jax is his throw. So the base throw by itself is nothing to write home about, but he's allowed to dump meter into his throw. So if you're willing to spend a little bar instead of the 11%, you're gonna get a bit more. Now look at that, right? So you can actually spend two bars. If you spend one bar, you will get one dump here, and you'll do 16% instead, so basically you get 5% more. And if you spend two bars, and you'll get 21, so another 5%. So basically, you're willing to get 10 more damage, 10% more damage off the throw if you're willing to dump the meter. Now, as far as like efficiency goes, it's not good. It is not meter efficient. 
but you can't really map out fighting games that way. Sometimes you need meter inefficiency, right? It's one of those deals, do you have the meter now? Do you want the damage now? Sometimes that might be the game. That might be the extra damage you need to win the game. So unique to Jax is just the fact that his basic throw has a bit more bite to it than some of the other cameos in the game. Now to get more mundane after that, cause it's hard to top the unblockable, right? Cause the unblockable is pretty crazy. Uh, down cameo is the square wave attack. So it's not quite full screen. Like you say, if you remember Mortal Kombat 2, uh, it is a mid. So the main use is this. Take whatever block string you're doing. It doesn't matter what it is particularly. If you don't like the numbers, it makes it basically completely safe. It forces the enemy backwards, like a good amount of pushback. And it's only negative three, which might as well be a full reset at this distance. And also, it's a very invincible wake up. So good on block, good on wake up, handy. Other than that, Jax is all about combos and gimmicks. So Sonya, besides Serena, Sonya might be the most easily applicable cameo to just about every character in the game. So one thing out of the gate, her forward throw is the best forward throw in the game. Does 14%. Almost everyone does 11, a couple people do 12. Uh, I believe Sub-Zero does 13, she does 14. So if you're looking to maximize the damage off a single throw, Sonya's cameo throw is the single most damaging basic throw in the game. Now, besides that, she offers solid projectile support. So this is a summon assist and she'll shoot her ring projectile with a pretty fast recharge rate. So by itself, okay, well, you know, it's a high. You know, most people have high fireballs but some people are a little bit more deficient and they'll take just anything they can get, right? And now the really cool thing is you can hold it. And if you hold it, it becomes a much more damaging mid, which means you cannot neutral duck it. You have to block it properly or you're gonna get hit. And also partway through, you can regain control of your character. So when she's committed to holding it and you're holding the button, you can freely do whatever. Like I can go for my Superman here and both can connect at the same time. And you can also do partial charges to freak out the enemy, screw up their timing. You don't have to hold it all the way to get the big mid fireball. Basically, it just gives you a lot of modular projectile power. And once again, even if you hold it, it takes the whole bar, but it's a very, very fast recharge. So you can get a little belligerent with it. Think of it this way. While you're holding it, you can set up all sorts of tricks and gimmicks. Basic combo, right? But just to give you an idea, right? You can be very tricky with this move in a way that is more than just a simple projectile once you're able to freely move while she's still charging it. It's very, very powerful. And that's not even the strong suit of the character. That is her ambush assist, the square wave attack. So being an ambush, you can do whatever you want and she'll get called and just flies across the screen. Big no fly zone, even at bare minimum. You can use it defensively, because while she's in the air, you're not jumping. Try and jump, you're gonna get bopped. And it kind of makes combo structure mildly trivial, as she can just make everything super free flow. Like, it is trivial to make her just do, make anything work. So if you're looking for like triple lightning in a combo, first one's regular, second one's EX, and another regular, very easy. Square wave makes the world work as far as combos go. And of course, that's not all, she has the scissors. And leg scissors is a true bounce. So you can get combos after the fact. So if you're the kind of character that needs like say meter to get the party started for combos and you don't got, you're just out of meter, you're out of juice, right? Like for Raiden, no EX shocker for me, that sucks. Sonya says, nah, I can help you out a little bit here. I'll help extend the combo and we can work something out, right? So for characters that are meter hungry, she also gives you very strong meterless combos because she'll help extend the combo no matter what. So easy combos, easy combos, a decent projectile, a projectile that's uh, potentially very strong on the gimmicks. Sonya is very applicable to the majority of the cast. You almost can't go wrong if you pick Sonya. Kano, so Kano is very interesting. So one, he gives a very strong neutral projectile for characters with weaker games or like non like Johnny. This gives them decent amount of screen presence. Uh, the beam itself, very good, high damage as well. It's just a very solid projectile all in all. And he also has another one. So this is maybe the defining feature of the cameo as a whole. He has an ambush projectile. 
Meaning you can be doing, you know, anything you want and you can call it. You're not stuck in the summon animation. So this is very strong, just period. Like you can call him, be on the other side of him, maybe teleport if you have a teleporter, whatever. You can just call it willy nilly and then you can rest assured there's two knives coming your way. Also very important is you can combo after the fact. If they connect, it's a combo starter. So you can get all sorts of parties started with that. And just general pressure, once again, it's projectiles as an ambush. So you can do whatever you want. The projectiles are highs, sure, so you can neutral duck it. But since it's an ambush and you're actively doing whatever you want to do, if you're worried about ducking those highs, maybe I got a present for you with the terms of an overhead. And in that situation, it does bounce. So naturally enough, you get a little bit of a combo follow-up, right? Not optimal, but just to give you an idea. So yeah, uh, incredible presence. The only downside is the regeneration takes a hot minute. Uh, it's a lot slower than most projectiles, but still it's very, very powerful. And we got more to work with. Another ambush is the Kano Ball. And that is a mid, by the way, so no neutral ducking that bad boy. So the Kano Ball, Kano, well, he just flings himself at you. And one of the interesting things about it, if you hold the cameo button, he will stay in place for a good while. So you can delay, set up shop, like do whatever gimmicks you want to go for, and then release him. Not the least of which, he can be a bit of a revenge meter for you. While he's behind you and you're holding the button, he can't be touched. So if someone hits you, you can just let go of the button and then Kano will save you, which is kind of funny. So pretty simple in the end, a very serviceable projectile, great for characters with weak or no projectiles. Uh, one of the best ambush assists in the game, straight up. The ability to throw double hitting projectiles that let you combo after the fact, anytime you want, very powerful. And Kano Ball has some interesting gimmicks, especially with the delay, and especially that he can almost be like a bit of a revenge mechanic that you can let go and, while you're getting hit and have him hit the enemy that's hitting you. Since two of the three are ambush assists, that means he's very active, so you can do whatever normal game plan you want without having to worry about slowing down for a second. You can do any kind of offense and Kano will be there to back you up. Now, Darius is a very interesting character in that he's pretty hyper specifically about the one thing and that is setups. So first off, back cameo is a big wacky uh, piece of business. Uh, you take Darius and you swing him around like a weapon. The thing about this specifically, for characters that don't have like a lot of range, can't contest this part of the screen that well, Either they're good from like, you know, this far away or they're good up front, but from here, not so much. This gives you a really valuable tool in that it controls a wildly big part of the screen and is relatively fast, all things considered for what it is. So if your mid screen's a little suspect, this is good, but that's not the main event. The main event is this guy right here. So what this is, this is an ambush assist, by the way, so you can call it whenever you want. It'll take whatever combo, and it'll add a stun state. It can be a million hits. The amount they're gonna be held here is the same. So it's good for combo extension, which is great. So we'll go for a fairly standard Sub-Zero style combo here. And at the end of our combo, there we go, Darius, he gets that extension. And we can get more hits from there, which is great, sure, but it's not the real secret and the real power of what he's capable of. So after he does this here, he has multiple follow-ups. So. You get some cool tandem offense going on if that's what you want, just a little extra damage. But the big thing here is this flip. So you can do the flip by itself, that's just forward cameo. And after the flip, he'll go for another overhead. And as you can see, that overhead bounces the enemy. And if you do the combo extender, you can do it for free, even though the combo extender takes the whole bar. You can do it for free and get that whole setup going. So that's what we're going to do at the end of our combo. And there you go, when you note it, that he hits him with that overhead, big bounce. Naturally, overhead, blockable. Like, it's nothing guaranteed, absolutely not, right? Totally blockable, but you're able to move at this point, right? And the big thing about this setup here, the big deal here is this, when he's setting up for that overhead, uh, you can go for lows, you can go for any kind of attack, so you have a low overhead difficult to block scenario. Also, if you hold the button, you can have him delay the hit. So, it's not a fixed timing. You can't just guarantee it will always block low first, like overhead, all that. It's not just necessarily fixed. 
you can hold it and then, you know, go for the overhead without ever introducing a low. You can hold it and while they're worrying about the overheads, you can just throw them instead. Like, there's a lot of potential gimmicks and just sass you can do with this. But yeah, suffice it to say, the real power of Darius is you get whatever combo you're going to get, but you get a powerful setup at the end of the combo. Once you do it, you get your flip. He's got the overhead. He's, he's got it in the chamber, right? It's ready to go. And all sorts of variable timings, because if you hold the button, you delay it. And then basically, it's mix up city. Go for the low, then go for the overhead. Go for no low, go for a throw. Do whatever you want. Darius is the setup character. So yeah, spin him around all wacky like that's not bad. It's a decent enough tool. But basically, if you're picking Darius, the main idea you're picking this character for is you want to get your big combo. And then after the combo, you want a potential guess weird mix up for like the game. So basically, if you like mix ups, he's a very valuable addition. Going from Darius to Striker, our other main mix-up style assist cameo. So out of the gate, Striker gives you what you want. He has a low, and he's got an overhead. Simple as that, right? And you can cancel into these from any string. So get your low, get your overhead. It's all there. And also extra fun bonus. We turn on the frame data here and set our opponent to block. The one thing you'll notice is uh, that overhead's plus on block. And the low is also plus on block. So not only can you get all sorts of your gimmicks going, it's also still effectively your turn after it's all said and done. So that's pretty powerful in my book. Also, if you're playing a character with like strings that have overheads or low built in, like say Raiden here. So forward, four, three, four. So it's low, 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 right? Certainly would mess up the enemy if all of a sudden there was an overhead in there. Pretty tricky, and you can mess with the timing. So after the first low could be an overhead, after the second low could be an overhead. So on a base level, if you're looking to be tricky, out of the gate, Striker's got your back. Where he also has your back is Projectile. So he's one of the very few characters that has an ambush projectile. He'll throw his classic grenades, just like Mortal Kombat 3. So he'll throw two, they're both mids. Uh, back or forward is two different angles. If you do back cameo ambush, it's a little lower to the ground, not as far. If you hit forward, it'll be further out and a little bit more higher up in the air. But yeah, they're both mids if they explode that way. So if you neutral duck and it's low enough to the ground, it will bop you, so watch out for that. As an ambush assist, that doesn't mean you can actively call while you're doing combos, right? So you can get a lot of fun meterless or even metered combos beyond what you normally could. That is the power of ambushes. You can just call them whenever. Also, not gameplay necessarily, but just his throw animation is actually pretty sick as well. I dig that a lot. And if that was it, lows and overheads out of the gate and a pretty decent, interesting ambush projectile assist. If that was it. That would already be worth the cost of entry, right? But he also can arrest your ass. So what this is, is him putting you in cuffs and he restands you. So you can go for a full combo, get your juggles in, all that fun stuff, right? And end your combo with the assist call. And here we go. You're under arrest. So no knockdown, therefore no get up, no kind of stuff to defend themselves. And it leaves you at terrific frame advantage. Now to note, it's not a capture state like a Sub-Zero freeze. They are able to block. But the thing is, while they're stuck, you are well over plus 30 frames. So you get to go first by a fair bit. The thing is, since it takes them so long to recover, and even though they are able to block, they still have to block correctly, right? So in this situation here, they still have to block low. And say if they know they got to block low, well then they certainly didn't block overhead, right? So it re-stands them, gives you massive frame advantage. And then basically if you're the character inclined towards doing a 50-50, then it just gets really scary. Like they got to worry about all the pressure. And even if you don't have a 50-50, at the bare minimum after this, they just got to block. So you can do uh, whatever setup you want for chip damage perhaps. If you're a character that has normal strings that have advantage frames, you can set them in a situation where they have to block and this have to block your advantage frames and then you get even more turns. But yeah, it's just basically you're in jail very literally because you're blocking and you can't do anything other than hope you guess right. So Striker is a very strong pressure and mix up cameo. Motaro is a very interesting grab bag of tools and tech. So out of the gate, some lasers. He does have a projectile. It is a low doesn't quite go full screen, 
as you can see here. But you know, better than nothing, especially for characters deficient in projectiles or just deficient in lows as a whole. The big thing is he doesn't like fireballs. So he has a reflector. And if any projectiles hit the reflector, well, not only are they being nullified, they're actually getting thrown back at the enemy. And also, you can have a version where he's walking forward. So you can like effectively hide behind him as he's actively just deflecting projectiles for you. So that's very, very cool. So he's definitely another anti-fireball character like Sub-Zero. And on that note, he has a teleport. Teleports inherently by nature are anti-fireball, sure. And uh, it's fairly quick for what it is. You recover fairly quickly as well. So if you're just looking to traverse the screen without having to earn your way in, then Rotaro's good. Now here's the interesting part. Teleport interrupts you no matter what you're doing. So if I'm like doing a special move, it'll stop you from doing a special move, right? It just grabs you as you are and teleports, which, you know, for the purposes of certain special moves, maybe isn't great. But uh, what is great is it allows for certain tech. Like I picked uh, General Shao here for a reason. His 4-2 overhead, very slow recovery. You get a can follow up, 15%, which you know is not awful, I guess, but like it's not a lot of damage and it's death on block. If they correctly guess, you're done for. So if you're risking your life, you want to risk your life for something good, right? And you can't special cancel this move. Like it doesn't work in any special moves. You can't even normally call assists. Like any of the assist calls are not working. But teleport is an ambush and it'll pull me out of what I'm doing. But the enemy is still stuck in their hit state. As you see, Reiko's like slowly getting up from the ground, right? And from here, I can absolutely combo. So now this is certainly a good sight better than the 15% we had earlier, right? It's like basically double the damage. So in those kind of scenarios here, the teleport can give you a lot more bite to some basic things. Teleports also allow you to sequence break. Like whatever you're doing, it'll just stop you doing it and start the teleport. So this can lead to some weird setups. Not necessarily all beneficial, although there's some really sneaky things you can do. Check the video linked in the video description for some really terrifyingly strong things you can do with teleport sequence breaks. That's It's good, trust me. But on a space level, it just teleports you and lets you get more damage in certain scenarios. So he has another cameo move. This is the turret. So this takes all your bar, but he shoots three projectiles one after another. And the call itself is quick and you can do whatever you want to do, right? You can freely move around while you have these projectiles backing you up. Like it's low key if you ever play Marvel vs. Capcom. It's almost low key like Sentinel drones. Because while he's safely there shooting stuff, you can do whatever you want to do. Like say they even hit you, right? It doesn't stop the assist from going off. It's going off no matter what, even if you get hit. So it'll save you from combos on top of helping you pressure the opponent. It's actually incredibly powerful. That's why it takes the full meter, because if this was spammable, this would easily be the single best assist in the game. Also, a weird trait with him is Fatal Blows. This is unique to Motaro. No one else can really do this. So he can interrupt the start of the Fatal Blow. So normally here, General Shao throws the axe, right? If you hit the cameo button while this is live, instead Motaro will attack. Like the animation will play out the same normally, but if for whatever reason you have a fatal blow and you need a faster startup, as this startup is faster than the normal fatal blow, then it works out great. Like let's take this string here. It's a good hit confirm string for Katana, right? Her own fatal blow is too slow to combo into it. It just doesn't work, which sucks for her, right? Guaranteed damage, not so guaranteed. But if we use Motaro to cancel out instead, Motaro being the glory hog, his much faster attack will connect. So in those rare situations where you need just raw speed on a fatal blow, it's a really fun and interesting trait. Once again, only Motaro has it, but he can steal the glory from your character and get a faster fatal blow than you normally could get. So let's talk Cyrax. Cyrax uh, is another really good all-rounder cameo that I think almost every character in the game can benefit from heavily. One, he's got the classic net. Net is a capture state. It's a really long lasting capture state. Like, even if you get it from full screen, rest assured, you're going to be able to dash in and get a full combo. It's a mid, therefore not neutral duckable. You just got to deal with it. Either you block or jump over, but you have to deal with it properly. So in and of itself, it's just fantastic. Even if you have your own projectiles, right? It is still good to toss out. Now, one of the interesting things here is he has the self-destruct. 
So kind of as advertised, right? He'll blow up and launch the enemy. And you can call him in from your side of the screen or you can call him in from the opponent's side of the screen. So say if you're farther out, it'll be here. Or if you do it the other way, it'll come from the other side. So there's ways to set that up and all that kind of stuff. And the interesting part here now too, if you hold the cameo button, he'll delay. It won't be forever, but say if you have him and you know, directly on top of the enemy and you're like waiting to do mix-ups and all that kind of stuff, you can hold it, hold it, and they have to just guess when you're gonna let go and you're allowed to freely pressure them. And of course, say they're blocking everything and then you can say, nah, peace out, right? And he'll explode and you can reset. Now the thing about him, keep in mind, friendly fire's on. He'll deal more damage to the enemy than he will to you, but he will launch you. He don't care. Uh, the fact that the threat of him is such strong pressure, that's basically like a balancing mechanism because otherwise it might be the best assist call in the game without that. But don't worry, even without that, he already has another contender for best assist in the game. That is the Cyrax Copter. So that's just your regular tap and it is a ambush assist. So you don't have to settle for the summon, you can call it whenever you want. By itself, he just spins right up in the air, right? And as far as like juggles go, easy for juggles and combos, like it's self-explanatory. But the thing is, if you hold it, he'll now go across instead of just straight up. Now all these attacks are highs, which technically means it's neutral duckable, but 99% of the time, uh, you're gonna be like a block string or a combo, and that means you cannot neutral duck it. So it just eats up a large part of the real estate, easily covers block strings, all the kind of stuff, deals a lot of chip damage, by the way. Like, that's actually pretty appreciable, honestly. So if you're looking to chip people out, it's a good way to do it. Also strong in combos in its own way. So we have the either the straight vertical one or the more uh, horizontal one to deal combo damage. It's just really a workhorse of a cameo. Like block strings, combos, neutral, everything. Once again, it's an ambush. You can call it whenever you want. And he has a very large hitbox while he's spinning around. So it's just one of the better assists in the game flat out. Cyrax, another character for the most part, you can't go wrong. He'll fit well with everyone. They all will benefit from the net. They'll all benefit from the Cyrus Copter. And even the most rudimentary pressure can benefit from the threat of his explosion being in the enemy's face. So Cyrax is pretty dang good. Sector also a fun cameo. So out of the gate, he gives you strong neutral as he'll set you on fire. Simple as that, right? Uh, it's actually quite a fast startup. It's very safe on block. Also barely negative on block. So uh, only negative three. So if your block string failed or whatever, if you want a little bit of pushback and some better frame data than your own actual normal probably has, then it's really good at that. Also, regardless of the combo state, it will restand them at the end. So if you're looking for restands, that's really good. This leaves you at quite a bit of hit advantage as well. Also has the classic teleport punch. So in and of itself from full screen, it's just a good way to hit the enemy. And up close gives you easy to work with juggle potential, right? So if you're a character with a um, say deficiencies in juggling, especially without meter. If you're looking for easy juggles, this is about as easy as it gets. It literally serves them to you on a platter, brings them right to you, juggles them your direction. So very strong for just general combo ability. And once again, not awful and neutral as well. But the name of the game, the ambush assist, it is the missiles. So once again, ambush, you can do whatever you want and he'll call the missile. So you can do a neutral call and land on your head. You can also aim it to a degree. So you can try to aim it closer. You can try to aim it further, depending on you know how the enemy's moving, if you can try to snuff them out. And if you double call it, it becomes a homing missile. So say your enemy's being all sorts of tricky. Sector doesn't care. He'll find them eventually. So the homing missile, it does take a full bar, right? Because it's homing, it's very strong. So fair enough on that, right? Can't argue against it. Also, to note, real quick, when missiles connect, it does create a combo okay hit state as well. So if you can nab that missile, man, you're gonna be getting some good damage in. So Sector, name of the game is you're playing Missile Commander. You're gonna be launching a lot of missiles. They're gonna be really good. They're gonna be really strong. Also, very serviceable tools in the Flamethrower and Teleport Punch are actually pretty all right. Uh, Sector definitely benefits more of like a pressure approach as you're doing whatever you're doing and you can force people to wake up into missiles. 
or frankly, you can kind of use it to complement your own zoning here because it's just another projectile on screen because it is an ambush. So while you're actively throwing your own fireballs and all that kind of stuff, you can have another fireball threatening the screen. So Sector, lots and lots and lots of tools to play around with. So Frost. Frost, honestly enough, you know, freezing the enemy, right? Makes sense. So she gives everyone universal freezing tools. One, she can create an ice ball. And the ice ball lets everyone be sub-zero for a day, basically, right? And one of the interesting things as well, if you say throw someone into it, you can actually, well, throw them into it. Like, while they're stuck in the throw animation, they cannot block, naturally enough. And the freeze don't exactly care if you're blocking or not at that point, right? Like, it just cares that you're there to be frozen. And it'll bounce you off by force, but you can dash forward and continue a combo. So, uh, if someone's, like, playing scared around this, you know, blocking, because it is blockable, naturally enough, right? Then you throw them, you're going to get the freeze off anyway. It's very strong. And, of course, all sorts of freezes. So Frost has a full screen low, yes, low freeze. It is a full proper freeze, so you can get all sorts of your combos going on. Don't worry about that, right? Like, the whole shebang, you can get it all, right? Full proper freeze, very fast for what it is, travels the whole screen quite quickly. Low, once again, has to be crouch block, stand block, you get frozen. And because of its relative speed, you can also work with it with pretty silly things, like say, uh, Tanya's stand three, hits from very far away, very easily cancels into the freeze. So then, we can go and get that whole combo setup we just did, right? So very powerful tool, and she's got a lot of tools. So her neutral assist call here is just a big old ice pillar, and eats up a pretty appreciable part of the screen in and of itself, and is a mid, so no neutral ducking, none of that kind of stuff. So if you want to hit people from this far away, and you know, you're not Tanya, right? Because very few people can hit, easily hit people from far away like this. Easy, quick do, right? That's not all. Look at the frame data here. This move is advantage on block. So not only that, say you're doing like whatever string. Whoops. I don't want to be minus five. I want to be plus. Frost says, sure deal. Let's be plus. So she can turn any negative string into a plus string. So that's actually very valuable, very powerful. Not only that, it's an invincible wake up too. So it uh, does a lot of things all at once. And also if you hold neutral assist, it becomes ice daggers, pushes the enemy out, does a lot of chip damage. You can also do it off hit confirms if you just need the enemy to go full screen. So she has more options than the average cameo does. The only thing is she has no ambush assists. So she has more assists. They're all actually quite strong, but they're all summon assists. So if you like being able to do other things while calling your cameos, then Frost won't be able to give you that. But overall, her relative level of power, given the options, uh, all sorts of freezes, plus frames, good wake up, good pushback, like very, very powerful. Now, our last cameo, Kung Lao. So Kung Lao, for my money, this is my opinion only, and it might be nerfed in the future. I think he has the single best assist in the game. Uh, he has low hat toss. So low hat toss is a projectile. Hits low, sure enough, right? So not even just a mid, it's a true low. Uh, as you can see here by the cameo regeneration, regenerates very fast, so it's very spammable, which is great. You can also hold it and delay it. So while you're doing that, you can do all sorts of other things. Like, you can even go for something that's straight up, like, not safe on block, then let go. So if they try to punch you and hit a button, they will instead get blasted by the hat. So that's really powerful. And, and, and... So many things, so powerful in so many ways. On top of that, it's plus on block. So even point blank, it's advantage two frames. That's ridiculous. So you can do like whatever strings. Do I want to be negative two or do I want to be plus two? It's a pretty easy guess, right? So it's a decent enough projectile by itself, especially for characters that do not have good projectiles. Not the least of which you can force like overhead low setups. Like which one's going to hit first, the overhead or the low, right? Or am I going to go overhead then low or low then overhead or whatever? You can do all sorts of gimmicks with that delay. And it's just a sledgehammer, basically. You don't have to think about it. You just use it and abuse it, which is really good because it regenerates so fast, you can use it and abuse it a lot. So besides that, and don't forget because it's really, really good. But besides that, he has spin. And spin is just a big old launcher. So you can get any hit string going on here if you can confirm the hit. You don't have to worry about your own stuff, especially for characters that are more launch deficient, don't have necessarily the greatest launchers. You're going to say, nah, okay, we got our launch. 
the biggest pop-up you could ever hope for, and you can just do whatever combo from there. So if you're not looking to spend any meter, thank you very much, Kung Lao, for giving us the easy launch. We'll be sure to use it wisely, right? Anyone can benefit from a big launcher, although some more than others. And also, it's got teleport. So like Motaro, if you saw the Motaro section, uh, very much applicable. The one big difference between him and Motaro, if you hold the button, he'll actually pop you up high, leaving you airborne. So you can actually get a jumping attack after the fact. So you can do that, or you can just do regular tap the button, he'll put you on the ground, right? Whatever works for you. But just very strong in all the ways teleports normally are. You know, just to get around zoning and fireballs at the bare minimum. It also lets you sequence break, so while you're doing whatever moves, you can just get interrupted, doesn't matter, because teleports will just rip you out of whatever animation you're doing, which can be very beneficial. We can end the animation early, and now, they get bopped off, right? Because the animation just didn't finish. And we landed directly on their head as the frame they wake up. So you can do some very interesting gimmicks with it. Once again, to really use and abuse teleports, check the video link in the video description. There's some really nasty stuff there. But yeah, Kung Lao, if only for low hat, is already worth the price of admission. The spin, the teleport are just icing on the cake. Low hat is ridiculous. And that is the guide to cameos. They are as big of a part of the game as the actual roster itself, because what your character is able to do is defined by their cameo choice. And just like we'll get DLC characters in the future, we'll also get DLC cameos as well. So the roster will keep expanding and therefore the options for what everyone can do can keep expanding. Just keep in mind your cameo choices. Like say we have Liu Kang, do we want Liu Kang with all sorts of pressure? then maybe we want Darius or Stryker. Do we want a proper all-rounder, Liu Kang? Maybe Serena or Cyrax would be the ones that'll fit the bill. Do we want to make Liu Kang zoning stronger? Maybe Kano or Sector, because they have powerful ambush projectiles, so they can throw more fireballs on the screen while you're already throwing fireballs on the screen. Do we want to add even more damage to our combos? Sub-Zero and Frost, very good, because freezing people will lead to much bigger and better combos. Do we want to set up gimmicks? Goro or Jax, really good for the unblockable setups. Do we want to do quakes or do we want to do stomps? Once again, every cameo affects the character a different way. It gives you new options to work with and it's the true beauty of this game. So that said, hopefully this video has helped you understand cameos a bit better and informed your choices for which characters you want to use with which cameos. And otherwise, well, now we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Mortal Kombat.